one of the most distinctive riffs in R&B, and this machine helped create it. Malcolm Cecil is one of the masterminds behind Tonto. What Stevie did when he got to, to Tonto, he was able to play all the parts himself. He said, this is absolutely, this is much more like the music that's in my mind. The charming part of uh, Tonto and analog synthesizers in general, it's you're never the same twice. You can't ever repeat it. So if I go, so it's changing the key I'm playing. So if I go, Moving. This thing is randomly moving things. So these oscillators here are not locked to each other. They just drift. And so over time, things change. And when they change, everything moves. The sound quality changes. It injects an uncertainty into the recording process. It becomes like a performance. It becomes like a jazz thing. You have to get it there and then because you've only got one shot at it. With digital, it's the same every time. Boring. <laughs> Bop, 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 bop. These are playing this. So I've got a little drum pattern here. Okay, and I can play along with it. The group, a tribe called Red, is embracing Tonto's unpredictable nature. They consider it a collaborator on their upcoming album. We have an idea of what we want Tonto to say but Tonto will just completely do whatever it wants. It's like the tiredness in Doctor Who, because you can't program it to do something specifically. You can, you can set up the parameters and ask Tonto to do what you, what you want, but what comes out is beyond your control. Mm -hmm. 